The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Typebond. All right, well, we just heard back from the environmental testing place, and not only did we get that powder material tested, that granular material, we also got the glues that are on this wall tested. So as it turns out, uh, this black stripey stuff here, that is asbestos. Uh, thankfully, there's not a lot of it, and it's very, very thin. It's not sticking off the wall. We're putting wallboard up there anyway. We're just gonna cover it up. We're not gonna disturb it. We're gonna leave it right where it is. As for that granular material, who is that? It is vermiculite. The mine that they took that stuff out of had been uh, found to be contaminated with asbestos. So anything that comes from that mine has a really good chance of also being contaminated with asbestos. Our particular sample came back negative, so that's good. But this is a big building and there's a lot of cavities in these walls. They had to use a lot of that material to do that fill. So that doesn't necessarily mean that everything regarding that material is safe. We are going to continue to treat it as if it is not safe and I don't want any part of it. So anytime I have an outlet or a junction box or something that is actually in the concrete cinder block wall, we are going to seal that up in some way that prevents that material from coming through. And we are going to uh, have to maybe change some gears with what we do in the shop in terms of anything that might puncture the walls. I really want to not do that any more than I have to. And anytime we might be exposed to it, especially as we get into the demo of this space, we are gonna protect ourselves with respirators and get good airflow and, and just prevent any of that stuff from becoming airborne if possible. You guys know me, I tend to err on the side of caution when it comes to safety. So I think at this point we can now continue with the demo of this room, tearing down the wall boards and trying to figure out what's going on with the electrical in here. While Jason starts pulling the old lights down, I turn my attention to the thermostat. I had to run some new wire and mess with the connections a bit to get it to work, but I was finally able to install a decent, smart thermostat. Yeah, I'll fix that later. Next, I pitched in to help with the lights. We ended up replacing the four old fluorescent fixtures with these two new LED fixtures. More light, better color temperature, makes such a huge difference. And I've got a couple of uh, wayward wires here. It looks like a, like a CB radio connection in there, a couple coaxial cables and some ethernet. And then uh, gotta find out what that is. There's actually, here check this out, there's actually an old TV antenna. So look at the size of this tower there. That's pretty sweet. But right there is an old beat up antenna. And I bet you with this kind of height and where we're located, we can get a lot of local over the air channels. So I am interested to see where that, where that goes because I do love me some good high definition. And for uh, local programming, that could be pretty darn cool. Because of the cable connection and the other wires, this was the logical spot for my tech hub. But I'm really not down with wires just farting out of the wall like that, so I'll cut some holes for new junction boxes. One will be for the cable internet and over-the-air antenna, and the other will be for power, which I could just fish up from the outlet below. Boom, baby! We then continued taking the panels off the wall, and by we, I mean Jason. Oh, what? What? Somebody had a bad day. In preparation for the flooring, we needed to knock down some high concrete on one side of the room. Thankfully, this was an area that was separate from the vinyl tile, so no asbestos, just lots of other nasty sh** that you don't want in your body. And now for some more flooring. You might notice that we're not really doing anything to level the floor. Why? because we don't want to. As I mentioned in the kitchen video, this isn't a house. There will be imperfections and we're totally okay with that. In fact, you'll see later on how the lack of flatness impacts the baseboard, so look for some gaps there. But we're not bothered by it because this is more of a utilitarian space. If you're installing flooring of any kind and you want to do it properly, be sure to go through that leveling process for best results. We decided to take a few doors down for painting and the back door in particular needs to be cut down to accommodate the new floor. I didn't film that process because nothing makes me seem less professional than when I'm cutting metal. You'd think I'd be more concerned about the fart jokes, the potty humor, and the childish behavior, but no, it's cutting metal that makes me look bad. That said, this floor is so darn clean, I just needed to relax for a second and enjoy it. Now continuing with the theme of do as we say, not as we do, here we are painting after we install new flooring. It's almost like we do this stuff just to get more comments, but that would, that, that'd be ridiculous. Come on. I actually forgot I had this paint sprayer, and while I kind of suck at using it, it really made quick work of painting both the doors and the trim. The snowy grass in August was just a bonus. All right, so time to replace some of the trim and doors. You want to screw or you want to lift? Woo! 
I could then drop in the simple baseboards and get ready to add the beadboard. So I think if we go a little bit under, so that's the absolute max right there. At a mean and green 43 inches on the nose. Now, here's the deal. I'm not even a huge fan of beadboard or wainscoting. It looks great in certain homes, but it's certainly not something that I'd be eager to install in a shop office space. But the problem is we already had paneling on the walls, and the only reasonable thing to do was to replace the paneling with nicer paneling, since we don't want to disturb that asbestos layer. So here we are doing our best impression of an HGTV house flipping show. This is another one of those things that you'll find no shortage of videos about on YouTube if you want to learn how to install it. Now the drywall sections were pretty straightforward, but the masonry side was a big pain in the butt. I used adhesive to do the lion's share of the holding. The problem is, with the various existing adhesive globs on the wall, it's really hard to get good surface contact between the panel and the wall. So even when you do that trick where you kind of push it in, make contact, pull it back, let it air out, and then push it in again, which usually gives you a really like high amount of tack, doesn't really work if you can't get good contact and we can't touch those globs because some of them are asbestos. So we just kind of did the best we could, occasionally popping a brad nail through a mortar line worked, but that's pretty unreliable. And and it can backfire really bad if you're not careful. Anyway, to sum it up, it kind of sucked. Thank goodness for caulk. Most people are embarrassed talking about their caulk, but I'm not. I'm proud of my caulk, and I use it liberally, as is appropriate for the particular task at hand. So the rest of the paneling was pretty uneventful, making cutouts as needed as we navigated the various obstacles. Finally, the paneling is trimmed out with some chair rail molding, or end cap, or whatever you want to call this stuff. To help attach to the masonry, I came up with the idea to use hot glue. Now this is in addition to construction adhesive, so it's really only there to hold it in place until that construction adhesive dries. Some last minute painting. A new return grill. A little cleanup. And this office has done been renovated. Now it still looks like what I imagine a therapist's office in a prison might look like, but we'll soften things up a little bit with some furnishings. All right, so I thought I'd give you a quick look at the finished product, or nearly finished product. I actually did want to add a couch. The kids wind up spending afternoons here, um, depending on what's going on with their schedules. So I wanted a comfortable place for them to hang out. Got a little TV so we could watch some games, uh, you know, let the kids have something to watch. And of course my desk area is a wreck. And I'm definitely a uh, cable management nerd, so this drives me nuts, but sometimes, you know, my rule is get set up, get things working, and then refine when it comes to cable management. Um, but I got a nice little sit-stand desk over there, some other crap that needs to be mounted. But uh, for the most part, you know, this is where things are headed. And this is a nice, comfortable office for us. Before we move on to the bathroom, I just wanted to let you guys know how important it is that you subscribe to this channel. On some of our videos, as many as 40% of you watch but aren't subscribed. Subscribing and clicking the notification bell not only ensures that you don't miss out on any of our videos, but also gives you the warm and fuzzies, knowing that it really helps us out as we provide you with great woodworking content and dad jokes. All right, let's get back to the bathroom. I gotta say, at this point, our butts were dragging and we kind of felt a little... <laughs> We're really not too keen on jumping into yet another room before even touching the shop space. But the reality is, if we don't do this bathroom now, who knows when it's gonna get done. And this bathroom is gross. So, I guess we're doing the bathroom. I know it looks bad, but I'm gonna get it. And it's gonna be perfect. And Jason's gonna say, I wish I was more like you. Huh. I could do way better. You know what the difference is? Jumbo means more wax. Versus your big booty. You know, it means taller wax. <laughs> oh, my turn. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna say you shouldn't use laminate in a bathroom. Next up, we installed the vanity, finished up the painting, and brought in the toilet. Here comes the poopa! Does that work? She's right there? Yeah, well, right in the middle of the floor. Yeah. The middle of the room would be good. I'm just thinking, when I go to use this pooper, there better be some toilet paper there. This is priority. Cut your sleeves off. Why is that not 
perfectly lined up. So I probably should have just used their template. I mean, it does say seven and three quarters. That's what I, that's what I drilled to. But let's uh, let's see what it actually is. And look at that, seven and three eighths, not three quarters. Thanks, Delta. No wonder nobody wants to fly your planes. Ooh, look at all that brown. fresh drinking water. The brown? No, it's clear for the moment. It's clear. Is that how you're supposed to sell? Yep, just like that. <sighs> Thankfully, it all came together rather quickly, so it's time for the piece de resistance. I hope you're not using the toilet, it's broken. No, I was just shaving. So now for a bunch of random stuff. A roofing company stopped by to take most of my money, just to do something I'll never see again after landing this drone, but they did a great job, and the roof was in desperate need. So now it's time for some air conditioning. The two garage bays both had heat, but no AC. And while there's two furnaces there, they were both on their last leg, so we opted to replace the two furnaces while also adding AC to the system. Once the old furnaces were out, we actually found one of the mystery circuits and were able to repurpose it for a future 220 circuit. Bonus! The air conditioning and furnace install actually took a full two days, but in the end, it looks pretty decent and we now have air conditioning, just in time for Halloween. Now I'm sure I'm going to get some questions about why I went with this air conditioning solution instead of ductless mini splits. Um, I've been a big proponent of mini splits. I've used them in the past, especially the Mitsubishi line I think is fantastic and super quiet, very efficient, but they're also really expensive. And especially, you know, there are some DIY solutions on the market too, but I like to rely on professionals for this stuff. And I also like to get a brand that most uh, local companies will service if I need that type of service. So I always went with Mitsubishi. I priced that out here. I'm not going to tell you how much the estimate was, but it was really expensive. And I started to think about my options. Well, this place already has furnaces. It already has ductwork, right? So I'm looking at that going, well, shoot, am I really being a goofball here? Should I just add air conditioning to the existing system? And then when I looked at the price for that, it was about $6,000 less. So while it's a little more old school and less efficient, it would take me a long time to recuperate that cost savings if I went with the other option and spent more up front. So that's why we went with this. It just made use of things that were already here. I did wind up having to replace those furnaces because the old ones were just, they were old and needed to be replaced. Um, but even with the furnace replacement and the addition of two air conditioners, we still wound up way ahead in terms of finances. And it's kind of nice to just reuse this ductwork that's up there anyway. It does a really good job of distributing hot and cold air now uh, into both of these bays uh, with the two separate units. So very happy with the decision. Yes, it's gonna be loud and I'm gonna have to turn them off at various times, but um, that's something I'm kind of used to doing anyway. In the past, I had a little uh, electric heater, just the forced air heater that uh, we used in the shop for supplementary stuff and I would turn it off when it was time to film, just the way it goes. And I know a lot of you are gonna make a suggestion about maybe boxing this in, closing in the furnace to try to soundproof it. There's a lot more to that and it would be a lot of work and that's something I definitely might consider in the future, but I just don't know if it's really practical for me, especially if once we seal this up, we still have to worry about ducts, air movement, and the sound of air going through all these different pipes and registers and all that stuff. So as it stands right now, we are simply going to turn it off during speaking parts of videos. Next, I wanted to add a slop sink to the shop where there's an existing drain and water connection. So we had a plumber reroute the copper and confirm that the drain drains. And just like that, I've got me a slop sink. Now it's cold water only, but I'm not sure that I care. We've got hot water in the kitchen and the bathroom if we need it. Some of the exterior lighting really needed to be replaced. So I got a few ring floodlight cams installed so that I can keep an eye on stuff. We also took care of some other things on the outside that needed a bit of love. An odd spot for a floodlight, right? Right. I, d I don't think it's active, but I know there's something in there. Holy crap, it keeps going. Wow. All right, you wanna take this over? I gotta go to lunch. Nope. You sure? Positive. <laughs> I think this looks better. Better than that wasp hole. 
At this point, I'm really over the gray color that was used pretty much everywhere in this place, so I painted some of the exterior doors while Jay played with dry paint. <laughs> so satisfying. It's like a, like a face peel. Tattooed. To redeem himself for slacking off for a few minutes, he decided to dig some new drains, <laughs> which was very much appreciated. It's starting to rain. No, it's just wet. <laughs> Ew. And then we ran some low voltage lighting for something really special. Yep, I have a flagpole and you can bet I'm gonna use it. This particular flag was sent to us by a viewer a few years ago and apparently it flew over an American base in Afghanistan. We've never had the means to do it justice until now. And that, my friends, is how you end a YouTube video.